Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Faith Fellowship's Daily Word of Encouragement. It's midweek now, and I hope you're doing well. I hope you're getting over the hump and things are going well for you. You know, we pray for you always. Sometimes God will put individuals specifically on our hearts, our pastoral staff and our church leaders, and then sometimes, you know, just in general. But we always pray for you because we want you to live victorious lives just as we want to. But I want to share a quick thought with you today, and that is that there's no way we're going to get through this life without facing something that seems larger than life or go through a situation that is just seemingly in our eyes, in our thoughts, insurmountable. But the Bible has stories in it just to let us know that what we see with our eyes is not the whole story. And anything that we see with our eyes or experience in life, God is greater. And so I'm going to read some parts of a story that's familiar to you. And some of us, we've known it since we were children. And it's about King David to show you that monumental trials are things that seem larger than life. That's through the natural mind or through our eyes. But through the eyes of faith, things look very, very different. Because faith tells you that nothing is too hard for God. Faith tells you or reminds you of victories that God has given you in your life in the past. Like, for example, one thing with King David, before he fought Goliath, he had already defeated a lion and a bear. And sometimes you need to remember that God has given you victories in the past so that you look at today's trial, which seems insurmountable, you look at it through the eyes of faith and things that God has done for you already. You see, Satan designs trials to make them look like we cannot win. This one is insurmountable. Or sometimes because we've been struggling with something for so long, the feeling, the overwhelming sense in our hearts is we'll never get over this one. Whatever happened to us years ago, we'll just never really win or we'll never gain the victory. But these stories are there for us to read and use them for an example. You see, when David saw Goliath, let me show you what he was looking at. In 1 Samuel 17, it says this, a champion named Goliath, who was from Gath, came out of the Philistine camp. His height was six cubits and a span, meaning he was over nine feet tall. Now, this is with his eyes. This is what David sees. He had a bronze helmet on his head and wore a coat of scale armor of bronze weighing 5,000 shekels or 175 pounds or thereabouts. And it says on his legs, he wore bronze greaves and a bronze javelin was slung on his back. His spear shaft was like a, a weaver's rod and its iron point weighed 600 shekels. His shield bearer went ahead of him. 600 shekels or 15 pounds of spearhead. And so this thing was designed to just shred you to pieces. This is what David saw. But one thing you'll notice about the army of Israel, they never challenged it or they never had the courage really to go out and face this giant because of what they saw with their eyes. But David saw something different. He saw a man or a giant that was defying the armies of the Lord. And let me tell you something, you are a part of that army. You are in God's army, you're in God's family. And so when the enemy comes against you, he's really coming against God. But the enemy gives us false choices. He tries to get us to yield, acquiesce, or succumb to whatever we face. And so the idea is to one day give up and just say, you know what? I can't win. Listen to how the story continues. Goliath stood and shouted to the ranks of Israel, why do you come out and line up for battle? Am I not a Philistine? Are you not the servants of Saul? That's another thing. If you're the servant of a man, or if man, if you're looking for man to be your strength and your source, then yeah, Goliath in this case is probably right. If your strength is in man. So that's one thing they needed to dispel right then. 
or they needed to understand if they're the army of God, then their strength is in God. You need to realize that too. Your strength, my strength alone is really nothing for the enemy. And it says, choose a man and have him come down to me. If he is able to fight and kill me, we will become your subjects. But if I overcome him and kill him, you will become our subjects and serve us. You see the idea behind that, that threat or that boast or that challenge is to tell them that at the end of this matter or as this fight goes on and you face this giant with your own strength, the bottom line is that you end up becoming a servant of whatever is trying to master you. Be it drugs, be it alcohol, all kinds of problems that we face, be it pornography, whatever it is, be it abuse or things that happened in our past, the bottom line or the goal is to one day to get you to succumb to it. If you fight with your own strength is what Goliath is saying, I'm going to beat you. And then when I do, I want you to bow down and serve me. That is not an option. That is a false choice. That's not an option for you as a believer. We will bow down to no one. It's only God that we will serve. So that being true or our reality, let's just, let's agree on that right now together. We will never bow down to anything or anybody except the Lord Jesus Christ himself. David saw this behemoth of a man and David went after him and he challenged him. But David said something that let you know his mindset or his mentality about this trial he was facing. He recognized something that you need to recognize. He recognized something that I need to recognize and always remember. And so here's what he says to the giant of Gath. This day, the Lord will deliver you into my hands and I'll strike you down and cut off your head. Now, this is a boy talking. And the reason David could say that or he understood that he could overcome insurmountable odds is because in his life, in his earlier life, he had defeated a lion and a bear already. He realized that God was with him. Do you know that God is with you? Do you know that God is for you? Do you know that God is more than able and God can do above and beyond exceedingly more than you or I could ever think or imagine. You see, that fact or those facts in that reality has to be a part of your thought process that whatever you face, my God is bigger. And here's what David says. This very day, I will give you, give the carcasses, I will give the carcasses of the Philistine army to the birds and the wild animals, and the whole world will know that there is a God in Israel. Here's what David was saying. This victory is going to be because the Lord fights my battles. David did not say that he was going to go into that uh, battle and defeat Goliath by himself. David had a, a deeper point in mind. He wanted people to know that there is a God in Israel. I want you to know that your God is with you. And when you are victorious, people know that there is a God that, that loves you. There is a God that is for you. There is a God who protects you. There is a God who strengthens you. And David continues. He says, all those gathered here will know that it is not by sword or spear that the Lord saves. For the battle is the Lord's and he will give all of you into our hands. There's no way David would have won that battle unless he went into that battle knowing that it belonged to the Lord. You've got to know that the battle belongs to the Lord. And if God is for you, what does it matter or who's against you? If God is for you, the battle belongs to the Lord. You've been trying to fight all of your battles on your own strength. Think about it. The, the giant is over nine feet tall, over 750 pounds, a spearhead of over 15 pounds, 175 pounds of armor, 
all designed to be visibly insurmountable. But you see, those dimensions were put there so we would know how big this fight was. But we would also know in the end how big God is. But there's a secret that David had, and I want to share that real quick. And that secret is this, that something had happened in David's life when Samuel, the prophet, had come to him. It says, so Samuel came to David and he took the horn of oil and anointed him in the presence of his brothers. And from that day on, the spirit of the Lord came powerfully upon David. Samuel then went back to Ramah, or what he's saying is the spirit of God was upon David. Well, let me tell you something about that spirit. You see, the spirit of God that gave David that authority and David walked in that kind of authority and exercised that kind of authority and power when he fought that giant. Let me tell you something about that spirit. One thing you need to know, the same spirit that was in King David is the same spirit that's within you. Here's a little something about that spirit. Now to each one, the manifestation of the spirit is given for the common good. To one there is given through the spirit a message of wisdom, to another a message of knowledge by means of the same spirit, to another faith by the same spirit, to another gifts of healing by that one spirit, to another miraculous powers, to another prophecy, to another distinguishing between spirits, to another speaking in different kinds of tongues, and to another still the interpretation of tongues. All these are the work of one and the same spirit, and he distributes them to each one just as he determines. The spirit of God in you is so multifaceted. God can distribute to you any one of those gifts anytime he chooses. But you need to realize that the spirit that was in David is in you. And that spirit is so multifaceted that whatever you face in your life, the authority, the power of God is already at work in you. David understood that about himself, that the spirit of God was with him. Remember, no matter what the situation, how big, how monumental it may seem to your eyes. That spirit that was in King David is in you. And it has a multiplicity of powers. Walk in the spirit and let God show you how to walk in victory. Have a great week. God bless you.